turn on the light. Oh! Yeah! Woo! I don't know if y'all just saw that, but uh, that was this guy right here with a remote. <laughs> I don't know. I was playing with that earlier. I got way too much entertainment out of it. Um, yeah, so I'll just add that to my repertoire of dad jokes there. Um, how's everyone doing? Everyone having a good day? I am currently on my lunch break, and I was thinking about um, my latest adventure in the realm of learning technology. Um, I transferred a domain I own from Google Domains, which recently went out of business, or they shut it down, however you want to phrase it, right? They're selling it to Squarespace. Too long, didn't read. Uh, so that's where I had my domain registered, and I transferred it recently to uh, AWS's Route 53, because that's where I'm building infrastructure. Uh, figured keep it all in under one roof kind of thing. Transfer goes through, all good and dandy. Um, I configure an S3 bucket to host some basic index.html file, right? Let's uh, attach it to the domain, see if we can get this thing running. And I made some mistakes. So first, S3 bucket was not named properly. Apparently, the S3 bucket has to be named, uh, it has to match the domain name. Okay, cool, remake the bucket, re-upload, no problem. Also, when you have a hosted zone on uh, AWS, those name servers are not then um, automatically copied over to the registered domain, which makes sense. Uh, I mean, a hosted zone and a registered domain are not the same thing, right? So you have to take the hosted zone information, copy it into the registered domain information. Now the registered domain understands where those name servers are. Awesome. Definitely uh, was pulling my hair out a little bit, trying to figure out uh, why won't the web page load? Well, near the end of that whole frustration process, it's because I didn't copy over the name servers into the registered domain. I didn't, I didn't give it the place to look. My bad. All right, fix that. Leading up to that, like I said, that was at the end of the whole debugging process. Leading up to that, I. I was thwarted by DNS propagation. So essentially, a DNS server is, is like a guide. Uh, you, the wonderful user of a web browser, you type in an address. That address then gets taken to a DNS server, more or less. And uh, the DNS server says that address, you know, www.mywebsite.com makes no sense to a computer. I have it stored as an IP address. Uh, go over there and it sends you on your merry way. You get to the website. Awesome. So with DNS propagation, what's happening is that that uh, DNS server has a record of where a specific website is located. Awesome. And those are updated uh, regularly according to settings placed by the website, by a, a TTL record, um, a TTL setting. In different records. Uh, what is TTL? Oh god, time time to load? Time? I don't remember. It's basically like how often does this record refresh? Easy enough. So DNS propagation just means when a setting changes in a website, how long does that take to then update the DNS server so that when people are looking for that website they can actually get there. And sometimes after a domain transfer that can take up to 48 hours maybe longer, maybe less. In my case, it was less, but that waiting period after I did the domain transfer and I set up the S3 bucket, wrong the first time, but set up the S3 bucket <laughs> and then didn't give name servers to the registered domain. Okay, set up the S3 bucket, got the name servers on the registered domain. Nothing's loading. You, you, you may pull your hair out a little bit because you're trying to do stuff that's a little more complex than just getting a website to load. Uh, sure, and then you're stuck on these little things as you're moving along. Okay, all right. So you dive into documentation, you pour over it, um, 
you find a few things that are helpful. You realize you've set things up incorrectly, maybe fixed them, you name server stuff. Uh, documentation is always good. Go there first. Search your question on Stack Overflow. Uh, and eventually things will work out because the DNS propagation period will end <laughs> and all the DNS servers will be updated. It's amazing how quickly, when you, when you uh, give those name servers to the registered domain, how quickly that website will load afterwards. Uh, that was nice. So finally, got lucasideas.com up and running. Awesome. That was the domain I transferred. It's needing some love. <laughs> if you go there now, you will see it, and it needs a lot of work. I mean, we're talking baby's first website. Awesome. Loving it. So I'm, I'm going to get that uh, all prettied up. And funny thing, I, I actually get it to load. It's a big old victory. I'm like super happy about it. I show my wife. I'm like, look at, look at loads. I have done it. I have hosted a website in the cloud and figured out how all that is, uh, how all that works. Isn't it great? And she says, great job. Why is it dark? <laughs> we got to talk about the black background. I want a dark website. It's going to be black with white text, maybe some other things on there. Nothing crazy. You know, I've, I've made mistakes in the past. The first time Luke Has Ideas was up, I was like, black background, red text, because red on black is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not so much for a website. It kind of just screams eighth grader, um, which is fine in its own regard. It's just uh, not for everyone, especially if I'm going to be sending who knows who there. Right? Maybe employers. Maybe it's like a, a project hosting site. Maybe independent business ven ventures. Maybe I'll host different services I offer people. Who knows? I don't know yet. But it's there. It'll be fun. Maybe it'll just be a blog. I don't know. Don't care right now. I'm just happy I got it loaded. So as you're as you're building stuff, as you're as you're expanding your career skills, maybe in the tech field like this, there's going to be little road bumps along the way, like DNS propagation and properly setting up an S3 bucket and giving name servers to a registered domain. Little things, because you're trying to learn API coding, you know, like make an API using this particular framework so that cool stuff can happen. That seems a little more complicated than three bucket static websites <laughs> when you run into those road bumps don't get discouraged remember that you're still learning <laughs> all of this is the process of learning and that knowledge will help you as you go forward plus you're gonna have to dive in and figure out what's wrong uh, and you're gonna understand DNS servers better you're gonna understand the the operation side of things better you're you're adding knowledge to the big picture of how all this functions and that's good that's good, that'll help you in the long run. And then you can get back to your API. <laughs> so that was the most excitement I had in the last uh, two, three days. It was just getting that transferred over, playing around with it. And my lunch break's gonna be over soon, so I'm gonna go back in that room over there and do stuff for the people paying me to do stuff. It'll be good. And you're gonna have a great day. And I'm going to say thank you for watching. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. And check this out. Oh! <laughs> Magic.